What's up guys, it's Jack the Gaming Boss here, and welcome back to Jurassic World Evolution, the return of Jurassic Park. It's our turn too, fuck. <laughs> Anyways, um, uh, so this recording, it's gonna be kind of different because I recorded the recording and it didn't get my audio because NVIDIA was being a little bitch, but, um, anyways, yeah, this is gonna be, um, part two, missions three and four on Isla Sorna. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, leave a like, subscribe, comment, blah, blah, blah. Um, and yeah, it's pretty, like, sh it's gonna be pretty short, but it's like, it took a long time to record. So, this is this, and uh, yeah, let's get started. We call it Site B, originally a massive holding pen and secondary research facility for our dinosaurs. Spared no expense. Didn't want to keep all your eggs in one incubator, huh, John? Aye, that is certainly one way to look at it. And another way, John? Yeah, it's also about the diversity of the environment. In other words, you weren't sure they'd survive on Isla Nova. Darwin's most famous works were centered on species he studied on the Galapagos Islands, isolated. It also has the benefit of keeping our work away from prying eyes. Yeah, and making potential rescue uh, like thousands of miles away. Always the negative with you, Dr. Malcolm. For now, we focus on the job at hand. Cabot. Yes, sir, Mr. Hammond. So, I think we'll need a new base of operations. Ranger outpost and visitor center, maybe? Would make a good headquarters. Alright, guys, so my audio for this recording kind of got messed up, so I have to, like, do it differently. So, I'm recording my voice over the video. Okay. <laughs> So this is going to be kind of weird, I guess. So, um, first off, we're going to be constructing a visitor center, and then we have to do a ranger outpost. So, um, these two buildings need to be connected to the main arrival helipad and the power station. So, um, I'm just trying to decide where to put it for right now. Um, I'm trying to do something different than what I did in like my previous game play, uh, so I just put it right in the middle, um, with the back facing the park, like the original Jurassic Park, um, and this is Isla Sorna, so it's kind of like windy and stuff, but I wanna, um, like put the ranger station next to where I'm gonna be driving in and out of most of the time, because, um, further down to the right there is a way to the um stegosauruses and the stegosauruses are like one mission by itself um so i'm putting the arrival helipad um i was kind of having issues trying to put the arrival helipad somewhere because i didn't know where i wanted to put it um, because I really had no space, and at this moment, I didn't really think about other missions, so I just put them out, like, separately. Um, I wanted to hide the geothermal power plant, because I feel like with major buildings, like, um, power buildings, you don't really see them in theme parks, because who wants to see, <laughs> like, uh, like a power building in the middle of a theme park, like, you know? So that's what I was kind of going for. And I kind of wanted to hid, hide the substation as well. Um, so that's that. Um, now I had to connect the paths. So I'm trying to use like my concept of angles and shit to um, figure out how I want the path. So I first create a general path for the arrival helipad. And then I do the main like curve that's in front of the visitor center in the movies. And then I try to connect the um, visitor center to the arrival pad, but um, 
it's kind of messed up the angles so I'm going to delete the rival helipad path and just connect it that way and it looks perfect <clears throat> now I'm trying to connect the geothermal power plant and honestly that would have worked right there but I kind of didn't like the curve so I delete the one that's connected to the power plant and redo it just because I <laughs> I just didn't like it and that looks alright to be honest um and now it's raining I didn't expect it to be raining on this map at all I kind of forgot um but now I connect the ranger station and uh we're good we need to test our breeding countermeasure on Isla Sorna's wild dinosaur population okay now I've identified a suitable group of dinosaurs Let's isolate them from the rest to perform tests. Alright, so now I'm just putting some, like, forestation around just to hide the buildings and make them look kind of, like, nicer from the ground. Um, from above, it's probably not going to look as good, but I just wanted to hide, like, the building. You can't, I, I, I didn't want you to be able to see the buildings from the other building. Um, and I think the trees in this game really do that well. Um... I think this is where I started to know, notice how much space I had for other missions um, because I had to do things with the incubators um, later on um, but now I have to isolate the group of stegosauruses so um, I kind of try to work my way around how they're moving and I'm trying to get the feeder and I'm trying to get the water in the um, in the like area that I'm supposed to have them but at the same time I'm also trying to make sure that they have enough space so they don't get like like <laughs> so they don't get like um, angry and start breaking the fences um, so yeah so from here you can kind of see that the area is kind of small already so I just said I really had to just make this bigger or, or else they're just gonna break out Okay, so I just make it way bigger. Administering the breeding countermeasure through the feeders. This is a huge step forward from the previous injection method. And Mr. Hammond wants to make sure this works. We'll observe the affected dinosaurs until we can confirm the effectiveness of the treatment. If this works, we won't have to train the dinosaurs as much. That'll help with their anxiety as well. A prehistoric animal has to be confused when it's being chased by a vehicle. I mean, what point of reference could it possibly have? I really hadn't thought about it that way before. They're as afraid of us as we are of them. If, if I were afraid. Fear is a survival instinct, Cabot. Any animal without it won't be around long. <laughs> then I should be around forever. <laughs> All right. So um, I connected the power to the fence, um, so, and I went like the like weird way of that small area. So that's just because I don't really use that area later on. Um, you don't use like 90% of this area on the game. So yeah. Now I'm just making the perimeter fence for the... Um, I guess you can say it's the main area of the park. It's not really a park, it's just like the incubation area of the whole game. Um, in the first... Actually, no. In the second movie, you start to, like, learn that Isla Sorna was the production area for the dinosaurs. So, this is kind of the same thing that we're doing. We're just setting up the um, production so we can actually make the dinosaurs and ship them to Nublar. It's okay. So, now I um, put the, gan the, gans the gates on the fences and... Um, I want to make this one bigger because, again, I was taking in the space of the area that I needed to um, do the other missions. And I'm just doing this just to make sure that some of the other dinosaurs don't mess with my like with the guests that are in the park because I've had that initial before. But at the same time, I'm just trying to like like pass the time that I have for like the 20 seconds of like ensure the isolated group of stegosauruses can eat from the feeder so yeah now i'm just trying to make sure that the incubators can actually be where they are um 
so that's just me planning for later and I think I um, just said yeah I can do that oh we should observe the dinosaurs and look for behavioral changes photographic evidence should do I'll get together a list <laughs> okay so now I just um, take the car and go to the stegosauruses and try to take a picture of them um, I really love this map. I love the cliffs because it kind of like gives you the vibe from the second movie, uh, Jurassic Park The Last World. And like, it's nice just riding, like, riding down all the way over there to the cliffs. <laughs> okay. So we have the Parasaurus and the Gallimimus. I think that the Gallimimus. They look like them. Okay. So here are the isolated stegosauruses, and we have to take a picture of them. So I just took a picture of them. Mr. Hammond is gonna love this shot. Okay, now I just have to take a picture of them from eating from the feeder and them drinking water. But I noticed that they're like running around like a lot. So, um, yeah. Something's not right. That's an understatement. What do you mean? The animals here, they aren't responding like they did on Isla Nublar. I haven't seen any of the dinosaurs exhibiting symptoms. The two are not mutually exclusive, Dr. Grant. I think Dr. Malcolm... Ian, please. I think Dr. Malcolm is correct. But we need to be sure. In their current state, the dinosaurs aren't eating or drinking. We need to identify the problem. Step one. Slow them down, hit them with the trank dart. Okay, so <laughs> at this point I was just complaining about um, my issue with shooting in games because of physics and stuff. But like, you can actually see the bullets in this game, like the tranquilizer darts. So like, it's kind of weird because when you're playing most modern FPS games, um, they just, you can't really see the bullets, so like, you know. Um... Yeah, we got attacked by a Stegosaurus. I was trying to make sure that they, that they don't reach my vehicle again, so I'm just like looking around all the time. Um, I think each one of the darts that I miss is $40,000. And playing it in like the challenge mode, that could be like a huge loss of money. If a dinosaur gets out, and then like you could just die in like a couple seconds. But yeah, I'm just having trouble shooting them. Because you can't really predict their movements, and you have to take in the actual, like, triangulation of the dart. <laughs> I also love how the vehicle looks on the when it's broken. Like, you're gonna see it in a couple seconds, but it looks amazing when it's just, like destroyed I mean obviously when it's completely destroyed you don't see it but it would be kind of cool if they had like a like a not an animation but like a destroyed vehicle um prefab that they could just like put it there and we had to like fix it ourselves but it's all right okay. and we yeah I, I thought there was another one somewhere but it was just this last guy And you can hear the engine tremble for the car, so that's kind of nice too. And I kind of got confused on why it switched, or uh, like why it um, reloaded, but like that was just because I launched a flare. I haven't used the flares at all in this game. I kind of want to experiment with them later, but uh, yeah, there we go. Tests on these dinosaurs are coming back all over the place. Like these animals, they've been manipulated. Um, theories? I have plenty. Which one do you like the most? Hammond told us there was another company trying to steal Ingen's research. Bias. Right. They got to Nedry. John believes it's Nedry's greed and Biosyn's money that became the catalyst for what happened to all of us the first time around. Hmm. You think they're at it again? Or maybe they never left.
Let's combat this first, then figure out who's to blame. We'll need to research and use a DNA sequencer to neutralize the effects of the faulty genome. The science needs to be right. Or the dinosaurs will be wrong. Dr. Grant, as long as we continue to interfere, the dinosaurs, uh, the dinosaurs will always be wrong. Alright, so now I'm just researching the modules that I need. And this is when I actually take a look at the vehicle. And you can, like, it looks amazing. Destroyed. I don't know. It's just nice. Um, and then they go just take a thumbnail picture. Um, but yeah, it just looks nice. I love the engine sputtering, the smoke, the lights broken. It just looks nice. Alright. Now I just gotta wait for the sequencer to be done. It's, it's so nice. We've developed a dart-based solution to the symptoms. The causes, however, they run right to the core of these dinosaurs, to their DNA. The fix will require a recompiled genome and new incubations. Alright, so now I gotta um, deploy the breeding countermeasures to the stegosauruses um, to make sure that it actually works. Um, just a reminder, at this point when I'm driving, I'm not looking. I think I'm texting someone. Um, and I made a joke about texting and driving, but I kind of forgot what that joke was, so I can't really say it. Um, same here. <laughs> I, I ran straight into the dinosaur because I wasn't looking at the screen. Um, but yeah. Um, now I gotta deploy the countermeasure to all the stegosauruses. So let's just... One... Two... I know that there's another there, that's three... And then I move over to the um, water area. Yeah, I move over to the water area because I don't think there's any more dinosaurs over there, so I just do that one. That's four. That is five. And then there is one more. Yeah, so far, I like the DLC. Um, price was kind of expensive you can say but I guess it's because of the new campaign if you noticed in the past the new campaigns cost a lot more money than the small DLCs So I hear we've had a spot of good news. We're ready to proceed with incubating new dinosaurs. John, we were never ready to bring dinosaurs back to life. A little bit more belief, Dr. Malcolm, and we'll be there soon. Chaos doesn't require belief. This is it, isn't it? We're back in the dinosaur business? I'm calling it paleo curation. But yes, young Cabot, yes we are. And it all starts with our eggs. Dr. Grant, this is where you literally make history. History with teeth and claws and uh, aggressive dispositions. I'm ready, John. Let's start by constructing and connecting some hatches. Okay, so I'm already working on <laughs> the mission as they are talking. So, um, at first I... I want to place all the incubation areas on one side, but um, we kind of have the issue of not having enough space, so I place one on this side, and I put the um, main entrance to the other side of the rival helipad, so I don't have to like connect it right away. Then I try to make these two even, and I connect the fence again, because the fence was kind of in the way, but I just put it back, and now I'm just making small little cages for the dinosaurs as soon as they got out so I can tranquilize them and then just ship them to where they need to go on this island so I just do that real quick um, 
So yeah. Okay, now you gotta um, connect the hatcheries to the pathways, and um, I'm trying to make the pathways look like as like what's the word modern? No, I try to make the pathways look more like natural, <laughs> and I kind of forgot that there's a there needs to be a power substation there, so I connect it, and I think we're good. The archive of genome data is a mess. Gonna need to rebuild the library with some new fossil samples if we want viable genomes. What can I do to help, Alan? Look, you can help keep the man in black and Hammond's shadow out of my hair for a bit. I think I'd rather try to break a wild T-Rex. Don't give Finch any ideas. He'll think that'll make a great ride. Yeah, and I'm worried that he can probably figure out how to talk Hammond into it. Alright, so now I just gotta incubate four dinosaurs, which kinda takes a while, um, because I have to actually research them and, like, do an expedition for them. Um, but at the same point, I am discovering the diseases diseases that I wanted to do in the last episode, but I got cut off before it even happened. Um, so yeah, I gotta make four dinosaurs, so I go for, like, the simplest dinosaurs that I can. Um, and I think it's the Brachiosaurus, the Parasaur... And I think the tri Triceratops. Let me just double check that. Oh no, I go for a Stegosaurus. So I go for a Stegosaurus, a Brachiosaurus, and I think I go for a Parasaurus. Yeah, Parasaur. Parasaur, yeah. So I go for those two, and basically I gotta wait a while. So we'll be back when I have all the things done for this mission, because it can honestly take forever. Okay, so now we have our Stegosaurus done, and I think we were just, oh, now both of them are done. So we're just going to go ahead and release them both, and um, wait until the mission to be completed. Um, but then I send my tranquilizer, or my um, rangers on them, and I create a new team, and I put a whole bunch of upgrades, so um, they can actually get it done quickly. Uh, so I put two reload speed 3.0 and I put two ranger accuracy 3.0 and I put a scheduling just to make them like you know easy. Then I run out of power so I have to put more um, output on there and then I have to put protection for the output. Um, now I just send the dinosaurs or send the tranquilizer teams on them and I should be getting the message message about completing the little mission first right now. Young Cabot tells me that our first new dinosaurs are healthy and fit, and the countermeasures are working too. Now we can provide the species that Jurassic Park will need. It should be smoother sailing from here on out. Yeah, you know, unless, uh, unless we hit an iceberg. An unfair comparison, Dr. Malcolm. Our technology is far more advanced. Yeah, but not your methodology, John. Alright, so now we have to incubate and release the Triceratops, a Dilophosaurus, and a Parasaur. So the Parasaur, we already have the genome for it. But the Triceratops and the Dilophosaurus, we don't have the genome for it. So, um, at this point, it was like 30 minutes before I had to start getting ready to take my final for math. So, um, I kind of rushed it, and I, um, got the genome percent up to 50 percent for the required dinosaurs and um that took a long time to get because the um dig teams were slow and the fossil center took like 30 seconds for each fossil so that added up to like at least 15 minutes so i have an extra 15 minutes of recording just because of the 
uh, research and uh, expeditions. So we're just gonna cut back to where um, we finished the mission. <laughs> Has anyone seen Cabot? No, not recently. How much do we know about him? Cabot? Hammond seems to like him. I've heard he's the son of a friend, which explains his lack of qualifications. Do we trust him, though? Hammond does. That's not what I asked. And what does Malcolm think? Ellie, I'm asking you first. I think Jurassic Park is making you paranoid. All right, so um, we have our Triceratops and our Parasaur completed, and now we're just waiting for the Dilophosaurus. Um, so I don't think at this point I um, knew where I was going to put the Dilophosaurus. I don't know if I have that on recording yet, though. Um, let me just make sure. Oh, he's done anyway, so we're good. <laughs> I think I already had it set out where I wanted him to be, though. We need to see that all dinosaurs on Isla Sorma are comfortable in their environments before we move our focus elsewhere. Well, as comfortable as they can be dragged uh, 65 million years into the future. We will get to work. Okay, yeah, I didn't have where I wanted them to be yet. So I put the Dilophosaurus with the feeder there so he doesn't like leave that whole area. <laughs> so, um,. We're good. I don't think the Dilophosaurus can take any dinosaur on, to be honest, in this whole area. So I think we were good at new ways. Um, so, yeah, I th think that's the end of that mission. Um, we just gotta wait that two minutes and we should be good. Um, so yeah, we're gonna cut to the ending scene. Yeah, we're just going to cut to the ending scene. Site B is secure. Great teamwork, everybody. You really know how to pick a cheerleader, John. A little enthusiasm never killed anyone, Dr. Malcolm. Really? Because I, I feel like your enthusiasm has nearly killed me uh, several times. Alright guys, so that was the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, don't forget to give a like, don't forget to subscribe. Um, donate to the description, in the, to my PayPal in the description below. And, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Bye.